So the month of the empty wallet is finally over, and since I know you love hearing my faggot opinion so much, I figured I would share my thoughts on the games that came out with you. Okay, let's get this bitch rolling, shall we? Uncharted 3. It's a game where you play like a guy that looks like me, and you kill British people for like eight hours. If this isn't a projection fantasy, I don't know what the fuck is. The set pieces are fucking cool. Like, literally the best I've ever seen in games ever. But the thing is, is that the two best ones were pasted all over the trailer. Cargo plane would have blown my fucking mind if I didn't see it six times already. Bitch. Also, there's a point in the story where it's like, oh, hey, we got to find three things. One's here, one's here, and one's here. So that takes all the surprise out of, oh, hey, I'm going to be in France. Oh, hey, I'm going to be in Syria. No, you know from the start that you're going to all three of those locations. What I'm saying is it doesn't flow as well as Uncharted 2, and it never really keeps you guessing. And as for the multiplayer, I don't know what's up with this $25 season pass thing that's in this and Gears of War. It's kind of a new thing, so we'll see if it pays off or just ends up being a fucking ripoff. Modern Warfare 3. Okay, this game I was, like, expecting to either be terrible or really terrible, and it was... Okay, this game is just shit. I'm sorry. Modern Warfare 2 was fucking cool. It was stupid, yeah, but it was fucking cool. Infinity Ward really knew what the fuck they were doing when they were creating set pieces and making everything flow with gameplay. This Infinity Ward no longer exists because Activision fired them all. Modern Warfare 3 has the same haphazard, we don't know what the fuck we're doing bullshit that fucking Black Ops had. And, and granted, it didn't have the stupid plot twist stolen from Fight Club at the end, which was just game. Okay, here's a recap of the story. There's a landmark that you recognize and it blows up. There you go. Oh yeah, and you know those fucking missions where it was like, oh yeah, follow fucking Soap McTavish and stay close to him the whole time. Welcome to the whole game. But I get it, you're in it for the multiplayer, which I've never really been a fan of. You are a rat running around in a Skinner box performing the same mundane task to unlock guns that are pretty much the same thing as your old guns but with slightly different stats. Pointlessly grinding yourself up to the next prestige, which really does nothing but for some reason you still perceive it as a reward because it gives you some sort of fictional bragging rights that in reality nobody cares. About. I am fucking level like 30 something and I still have not found one gun that I fucking like. Metal Gear Solid HD Collection. Okay, not really much to talk about here. Metal Gear Solid 2. Eh. Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. Okay, it's got multiplayer. Metal Gear Solid 3 Subsistence. One of the best fucking games on the PS2 and one of the best fucking games ever made. This alone justifies the purchase if you have not yet played it. Seriously though, while we're on the subject of HD remakes, you know what really- Oh god, yes. Oh god, yes! Fucking Skyrim. This is the best game ever made. Shut up. Holy shit, this world is so fucking alive, it's crazy! Everything is dynamic and it all works. This is amazing. I don't even know how they did this. Bethesda is a company that knows exactly what the fuck they're doing. I have such wicked respect for these guys. Oblivion was a fucking great game and it really didn't get the budget that it deserved. Well, guess what it's got now? It's got the fucking budget that it deserved. And holy fuck, you guys. In a world where everything is fucking sequels or remakes that are pretty much exactly the same game but with minor tweaks, and then Bethesda comes out with this, it's like, hey, here's 200 hours of game. What, online passes? DRM? Don't worry about it, bro, it's cool. When we release downloadable content, it'll actually be worth buying. You know why game companies always release their fucking games on Tuesdays? It's because the sales charts come out on Mondays, they want to be able to fucking brag that their game sold a lot of copies. Bethesda don't give a shit, let's release this bitch on Friday, because you're all going to be fucking playing it, and we care about your job. Why do you love me so much? God. I want to taste you. Also, if you make an arrow to the knee joke, you're gay. Halo Anniversary. It's Halo 1 remade with modern graphics. Yeah, whatever reaction that statement initially invokes is pretty much your opinion on that. Saints Row the Third! Fuck yeah, see, Volition is another company like Bethesda that knows exactly what the fuck they're doing. You get a big open sandbox world, and what do you do? You want to fuck shit up. Saints Row 3 is just like, here, have a big purple dildo and go beat furries with it. Um, holy fuck, thanks, that's exactly what I wanted. Assassin's is Creed Revelations. Okay, I gotta admit, I haven't really played a lot of this one, and here's why. I'll spoil the first five seconds of the game for you. Desmond is now in a coma, and the whole game takes place in the Animus, which is keeping him alive. In order to save himself, he has to put together his mind by living out the rest of Ezio's memory. Now, do you see the problem with this plot-wise? It doesn't need to fucking be there. I don't give a shit if it doesn't move the plot forward. This is a story-driven series, 
and you have essentially created like a filler game. Like Brotherhood still felt like a sequel. Shit still happened. This is just. Eh. I mean, the game's still the same, so, you know, if you were just in it for the stabbing, it's still stabbing. But seriously, though, Ubisoft, all that aside, you don't need a 25 digit code for your shitty multiplayer. No one cares that much. So, the Skyward Sword. Okay, so. First of all, let, let's just get this out of the way. Ocarina of Time was my fucking childhood, bitch. That's right, I too once used to be a child and I played Ocarina of Time. That said, this game does not fucking feel like a Zelda game. There are like three zones. There's a desert zone, a fire zone, and a forest zone. And you have this like hub world in the sky and to go to the different places, you just dive into them. So, it's like you're in these three little, like, almost mission hub worlds, and it's stupid. I don't know, some of the epic journey just gets taken out of it when at any point Link can fly back into the sky and go home and take a nap. It's just not that great. Also, there's a lot of fucking repetition. I'm not even exaggerating when I say you have to fight the most boring boss in the game three times. You constantly have to backtrack to places you've already been just to do something that could have been easily solved with like a one-room puzzle. Also, the game tries to pad itself with these really shallow RPG elements, like being able to upgrade your equipment. It's not fucking 2004 anymore, Skyward Sword. I'm not impressed. Also, another thing I'm not impressed with is what exactly is the Wii Motion Plus supposed to do? Make the Wii function? Like, it was to my understanding that that was kind of the Wii's thing, was motion sensitivity. So, okay, now they don't sell the Wii Motion Plus attachment, and all of the collector's editions of Zelda's are sold out, so what, I've got to spend fucking, like, 40 bucks on a Wiimote that's got Wii Motion Plus, and I might as well buy a nunchuck while I'm at it, because... If I'm gonna have a fucking other Wiimote, I might as well have another nunchuck. The point is, this game ended up costing me $110. Now it's come to my attention that I've been getting consistently louder throughout this video, and for that I apologize, but you know what? Eat my shit! I have no money. Now I have a bunch of video games that I need to fucking play. My life is hard.